Hi there, today I'm going to be showing you the Burnett B37. Uh, this machine is very, very simplistic, so easy to use. So I'm going to start off by um, turning the machine off so I can show you. You have a power lead that plugs into the bottom here. You have the foot control that plugs into the side and you just turn your machine on there. You have a handle at the back that you can lift up and turn it around to show you. And um, first of all, I'm going to actually cut that thread, pull it out and show you how to wind a bobbin. So with this machine, you have got a little felt on your machine. You place your thread onto here. You place your thread little holder on. Now don't push it tight so that your thread can't move. Just have it a little bit looser so your thread can turn around. Then you're going to get your thread and you can see here, I'm going to pop my glasses on, there's a little picture of an arrow. Now if I bend that you can see the arrows. Everything's very, very clear. So you're going to come round here and what you can actually do is take your bobbin off there's a little hole and you can thread your thread through the hole of your bobbin so that when you put your um, bobbin winder, when you click this across, your thread will stay in the place. So it's very, very good. So I can just put my foot down and as you see, I'll go slow. You can see it's starting to thread. Oops, one moment. <laughs> that jumped out of there because I haven't hold it, ha held it tight. I need to hold that tight, so just let me pull that back. You might do that at home, so it's probably not a bad thing I did that. I'll just get that nice and tight. There we are. That's better. So that was probably a good thing that happened, and then I cut the thread once it's all connected. And then just so, with your foot down, and it will wind your bobbin. You'll notice that the needle is not going up and down because I've engaged the bobbin winder. When your bobbin is full, you can just clip that across and you can cut your thread, okay? But today, I'm actually going to have white in my bobbin so I can show you how fantastic the tension is. So the next thing I'm going to do is thread my machine and put my bobbin in. So I'll just take my bobbin out that I've got in there so I can show you. So first things first, I'm going to thread my machine. So you have like a little foot lifter in under here that lifts your foot up and down. I want you to make sure that is up so that your tension units are open. I also want you to make sure that your needle is at the highest position so you can see my take up lever. So now I'm going to follow the solid arrows and I'm going to come around. I'm going to go down here following the arrow. I'm going to come around here following the arrow and I'm going to come up around here following the arrow. Then you come down behind here, there's a little bar. There's another little bar to the left. Now I'm going to use my needle threader. So at this stage, I'll put my foot down so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm putting my foot down. Now, try and keep my hands out of the road. I'm pulling my needle threader down. I'm going underneath my little plastic. I'm pushing it down and I'm going straight across and there's a little hook that's gone through my needle so I'm pushing the hook back and it's left a beautiful big loop and there you've threaded your needle, isn't that fantastic? I'm lifting my presser foot up and I'm putting my foot, my thread underneath my foot. Now I'm going to show you how you put your bobbin in. So you must have, actually I'll show you on the green one so you can see it. You must have your thread coming off the left hand side of your bobbin when you drop it in. So I'm dropping it in, and then there's a little, if I show you here, there's a little bar. You just put your thread in front of that bar, and you sit your thread there. And all you do, turn your balance wheel one rotation, and it will pop up your bobbin thread like that. Okay? And I'm just going to pull it up to show you. Right. Now, if you have a close-up look here, I'm going to lean it so you can see it on the camera. Your thread must always be coming across your bobbin like that so that you know that it's in the tension disc. So now I'm going to put a white bobbin in because I want to show you how good the tension is on these machines. I'll just grab my sewing thread like that. 
And now I'm going to put the wob white bobbin in and I'm going to drop it in, come around like that, hold my top thread, turn my balance wheel, bring up my top thread and there you have it. And that's how you put your bobbin in. And you can see really clearly the thread is going across the left hand side of my bobbin so I know the tension's right. Now this little top, it just sits in here and then you just push it down. To take it off, you just flick it and it will pop out. So to put it in, you just go there and you put it down and that's how easy it is. So now we're ready to start sewing. You've got a thread holder here, cuts your thread and holds your thread so that you do not unthread your needle when you start sewing. Now you'll see on your machine, you have got stitch number one, 3.5 width, 2.4 length. Now stitch number one straight stitching, so it's not going to do a zigzag, but it's going to do a 2.5 left length. And in, in your um, little easy drawer here, you have got all your stitches on here and all their numbers. When you want to change a stitch number, you just push the button and it will do all the stitches. You'll notice that it's changing your width and your length every time you change a button because it is fully automatic. It is so clever. So if I go down to stitch number one, straight sewing 3.5 width. It's not going to do that because it's straight sewing, but my stitch length is 2.4. If I want to change my stitch length, I come across with my arrow until the line is on the straight stitch and I change the stitch length. Very, very clever. So I'm going to put it back to standard and I'm going to sew and then I'm going to change it. Down here you've got pattern end, so that will finish at the end of a pattern. This will stop with the needle up or the needle down and this is my speed dial. This button here is my reverse button and this is to sew without the use of a foot control. So I'm going to show you all of those things. So first things first, you need to put your foot down and if you want to straight sew, you just leave it on the settings and it will start sewing and it's on slow, so we'll make it faster. And my reverse is there, so you just hold it down for the reverse as long as you'd like it to reverse. Okay, I've got it stopping with the needle up, but I can ask it to stop with the needle down. So now every time I sew, the needle will stop down. It's very, very precise and very clear. Okay, needle up, needle down, needle up, excellent. Now if I want to have a, a longer length, I've already moved my cursor along, I now can make a nice long length and that's how I change my stitch length. And reverse. Okay, now I'm going to go on to another stitch. So I want zigzag and it's stitch number five. So I push my cursor so that it goes to stitch number one again and I go number two, number three, number four, number five. Now make sure you please, when you do this, make sure your needle is up out of your work so you do not break a needle. So now I'm on zigzag and this is a preset zigzag. So it's on 3.5 width and 1.5 length. If I would like it longer, I need to bring the cursor over till it's under the length and make it a longer stitch length. If I would like the width wider, I need to make the cursor go under there and make the width can't go any wider, but it can go narrower. Whoops. Yes, it can go out to, oh, it can go right out to five. Beg your pardon. Okay, so the cursor is under that. Now I want to make it smaller. Very clever. Okay, so no matter what stitch you want to do, it will do it. Now I'm going to go down to a bigger stitch. So I'm going to go down to stitch number up, stitch number 41, which is very pretty. And the preset, oh this machine goes right out to seven width. That's how much I knew. So seven width is the widest width on your machine and it's doing a 2.5. So this is a flower. So I can now take my foot control out and I can now push the button and it's going to do it without my help. All I need to do is guide the fabric straight. 
So if you would like to, that's what you can do. You can sew without the use of a foot control. And when you want to finish at the end of the pattern, you can push this button, which is pattern end. And that's finished at the end of the pattern. I'll pick another pattern. I'm going to pick number 43. Now this pattern, it says the stitch length should be 0 0.4, but my preference is 0 0.3, so my stitch length is closer and it makes a more solid pattern. Pattern end. I'll put my foot control back in and now I'll show you those stitches. Really, really nice. So that is stitch number 43, but I've changed the stitch length to 0 0.3. And then the other one is stitch number 41 and I've left that on the standard setting. So this machine, if I go back to my zigzag, stitch number five, can do right out to seven millimeters width. So I'm going to change that. So seven millimeters is really, really, really wide. That's awesome. So you can have a really nice wide zigzag if you need it. Okay. So it's very simplistic because all you're doing with all your pattern in here is changing your number. Now what if you want to do a buttonhole? The buttonhole is stitch number 18. Oop, you need to have it the cursor at the right place. Number 18, preset, but remember, I like my satin stitch closer, personal preference. So all you do, you open up the front of your little drawer here and you get out your buttonhole foot. Comes like this. You open the back up and you put a button in it. So let's just pretend that this is the size of my button. So that is my button, okay? The foot, to take your foot on and off, you push this little button here. Is that, can you see that clearly? You push that button and your foot drops off. When you're going to put your buttonhole foot on, you must have your button at the back. And so you just put your foot under here, lift up this, um, your foot, and you put your foot under here and you clip it down and it will automatically clip in place if you've got it in the right place. Now I'm just going to get my thread out so I can show you. I want my top thread to be underneath here. So I'm going to hold the bottom thread. I'm going to do one rotation of my balance wheel. I'm going to lift my foot up and I'm going to slide my bobbin thread under there so they're both under my foot. Now, this buttonhole goes from the front to the back. So when you are doing a buttonhole, you want to make sure that you're sewing from the front to the back. Now, you have an automatic lever on this machine. This is so clever. So you bring this automatic lever down, here it is here, and now it will make your buttonhole exactly the right length. So you can either use your foot control, and it will only sew it at the right speed, and every buttonhole will be exactly the same size, because you've asked it to do that size until you change the buttonhole in the back of your buttonhole foot. So, so clever. So there's buttonhole number one. Now, when I lift the foot up, you watch this jump back. It jumped back, it pushed the lever back automatically, so now I'm ready for my next buttonhole. And I, if I was doing this at home, would take my foot control out and I would just simply use my start-stop button. I don't need to use my foot control and I'll let my machine do all of the work. So, so simple.
the bleep is to tell me it's finished. Now if I lift this foot up, let's watch that again, it pushes that lever back. So, so clever. So that is how you do a buttonhole on your beautiful machine. The other thing you need to be aware of, when you're buying a new machine, you need to use good, good quality thread. So please don't use overlocking thread on your sewing machine. Use either a good quality Metrosine thread or a Madeira thread or a Guterman thread because they are very, very good quality. Use the same quality on the top of your sewing as on the bobbin of your sewing. And the other thing you've got on this machine that I haven't told you about is your tension. Now, realistically, you shouldn't have to touch your tension. So it's on four, and with this good quality thread, let me show you. I have got white in my bobbin. Look how fantastic that buttonhole thread is. And I have got white in my bobbin and green on top. It is just a perfect, perfect stitch. Let me show you with my normal sewing green thread on the top and white thread on the bobbin and my stitch quality is perfect okay it's pulling beautifully but see when I do a very 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 wide stitch can you see how it pulls in my tension that is because I'm doing a very wide wide zigzag and I have no stability in my fabric that is always going to happen. So if you want to sew a wide thread, you either a wide stitch on a fine fabric, you need to either interface it or use tear away. So those things are really important for you to know. Now I just want to show you how you take your sew table on and off because this sew table comes with your machine and you simply just pull it off and this is where all your tools are kept. So if I take off my buttonhole foot, it is kept, and I'll take my pretend button, button out of there, close it, it's kept in here, okay, and um, so this is where your tools are kept, and you shut that, and that can go on and off. Now if you would like to, you can buy, as an add-on extra, this beautiful big sew table, and it just slides on, and it does fit this machine. So that is an add-on extra you can get also for this machine. Now I'm just going to show you how you put your sewing foot back on. So this little bar that is on your foot, every foot you purchase, just sits underneath your machine. And I'll just put your little lever back up. And as you put down your foot, you line it up so it fit, picks up your foot. So when it clips off, it clips off and you line your bar under your lever and it just picks it up automatically and you're ready to sew. So this is your standard foot and it's got a clear piece at the front so you can see where you're sewing. So I really hope you enjoy your sewing machine. One thing I'll tell you that I get a lot of phone calls on. People put this little bar across and they don't realise they've knocked it and they go to sew their sewing and this is what happens they hear that funny little noise and they think something's happened to their machine because they've forgotten to click their machine back over so I'm going to put it back on to um, straight sewing now that that lever's back I can now start sewing again on the machine. So all the noise was, was that clipped across, it changes the picture on here, and that's the noise you'll hear, and you've got no idea, I get so many phone calls about that button. So happy sewing, that's just a little introduction to the B337. Um, there are so many feet that are available for this machine and I'm happy to do videos on any of those feet for you. So I hope you enjoy your new machine and I'll see you again soon.